we added a bundle extension for loading one specific type of JSON data from our app bundle. But now we have a second type, missions.json. This contains slightly more complex data. First, we can see each mission has an ID number, which means we can use identifiable easily. We can see again that each mission has some description text, which is a free string text or taken from Wikipedia for us to use. We have inside here an array of crew to work with, where each crew member inside there has a name and a role. And all but one mission has inside it a launch date, here and here and so forth. All but one because sadly, Apollo 1 never launched because during a launch rehearsal, a cabin fire destroyed the command module and killed the crew. Let's start converting that to code. Crew roles have to be represented as their own struct, stored in the name string and the role string. So make a new mission file, a new strict Swift file even, uh, here, called mission.swift. And then we'll give it this code here. We've got a struct called crew role, which is codable, with a name string and a role string inside there. As for the missions, this will be an ID integer, an array of our crew role structs, and a description string. But what about the launch date? We might have one, but we might also not have one. What should that be? Well, think about it. How does Swift represent this maybe, maybe not elsewhere? How do we store might be a string, might be nothing at all? And I hope the answer is clear to you. We use optionals. In fact, if we mark a property as optional, code will automatically skip over it if the value is missing from our input JSON. So, we'll add a second struct to the same file now. It is struct mission, which is codable and identifiable. It has an ID integer, a launch date, which is an optional string, and then a crew array of crew role, and finally a description string. And before we look at how to load JSON into that, I want to demonstrate one more thing. This crew role struct here was made specifically to hold data about missions. As a result, we can put the crew role struct inside the mission struct, like this. <clears throat> this is called a nested struct, and it's simply one struct placed inside of another. This won't affect our code in this project, but elsewhere it's really useful to help keep your code organized. Rather than saying crew role, you'd write mission.crewroll. If you imagine a project with several hundred custom types in there, adding this extra context can really help. Now let's think how we can load missions.json into an array of mission struct. We already added this bundle extension earlier that loads some kind of JSON into a string astronaut dictionary here. And so we could very easily copy and paste that, then just tweak it so it kind of loads missions rather than astronauts. However, there's a better solution. We can leverage Swift's generics system. Generics allow us to write code that's capable of working with a variety of different types. In this project, we wrote our bundle extension to work with a dictionary of astronauts. But really, we want to be able to handle dictionary of astronauts arrays of missions, and potentially lots of other things too. To make a method generic, we give it a placeholder for certain types. This is written in angle brackets, sometimes called Pulp Fiction brackets. There's a famous film with John Travolta where he's kind of dancing with his fingers like this, right? Pulp Fiction brackets, angle brackets. Uh, and you put it after the method name, before its parameters. So we'd say here, func decode t. Now this t, it can be anything at all. We could have written type. We could have written type of thing or even fish or whatever. It doesn't matter. T is a bit of a, a convention in coding as a shorthand placeholder for type of something. Now inside the method, we can now use T everywhere we would have used this string astronaut dictionary. It's literally a placeholder of the type you want to work with. So on returning a string astronaut dictionary, we'll instead say I return a T. Now be very careful, there's a big difference between T and array of T. 
Remember, T is a placeholder for whatever kind of data we ask for. So if we say decode our dictionary of astronauts, then T becomes a placeholder for string astronaut dictionary. If we try to return uh, here, try to return an array of T, would actually be getting an array of string astronaut dictionaries, which is confusing, right? An array of dictionaries is weird. We just want to say T. And now, towards the end of our method, down here, boom, is another place where we have this string astronaut dictionary being used. Again, just change that part, not the dot self, leave that alone. Change the string astronaut dictionary part to be T, like that, T dot self, like so. And now, we're in a good place. What we've said is that uh, decode here, this method, will be used with some sort of type like string astronaut, and should attempt to decode the file that's loaded to be that type. However, if you see try and build the file, you see this error in Xcode, this instance method decode from requires a T conform to decodable. And what it means is our T placeholder up here could be anything at all. It could be a dictionary of astronauts, it could be a dictionary of something else entirely. The problem is Swift can't be sure the type we're working with conforms to the codable protocol. And so rather than trying to take a risk, it's just refusing to build our code. Fortunately, we can fix this with a constraint. We can tell Swift that T can be whatever we want, as long as that thing conforms to codable. And that way, oh, hello, dog. That way, Swift knows it's safe to use, and it'll make sure we don't try to use the method with a type that does not conform to codable. To add the constraint, We'll say here, t must be some kind of codable value like that. And now if you try compiling again, all right, you get one treat. Try compiling again, hopefully we're slightly better off. Only slightly. Not working still, but you'll see why in a second. You, one treat. So th this file's now fine. This is actually all good now, but it's not compiling for a different reason. Hey, one treat, she gets one treat too. Come on, let's just stick them up. The other one, come on. Yo, all right, clear off. <laughs> a different reason now. It's saying over here, generic parameter T could not be inferred over in our content view. Now this line worked fine before, but it's been an important change now. Before, the decode method would always return a dictionary of astronauts, but now it returns anything we want as long as it conforms to codable. Now we know, it'll still return a dictionary of astronauts because the actual underlying JSON data hasn't changed, but Swift doesn't know that. Our problem is that decode can return any type that conforms to codable, but Swift wants more information. It wants to know exactly what type it's going to be. And so to fix this, we've got to use a type annotation so Swift knows exactly what astronauts will be. So we'll say here that astronaut is going to be a string astronaut dictionary. And now, finally, after all that work, we can now load mission.json into another property in content view. So below astronauts, I'll say, let missions be an array of mission equals bundle dot main, oops, dot decode missions dot JSON. And it should, all being well, compile cleanly, boom. And that's the power of generics. We can use the same decode method here load any JSON type from our bundle into any Swift type that conforms to codable. We haven't got to write half a dozen variants of the same method. Now, before we're done, there's one last thing I'd like to explain. Earlier, you saw just briefly, uh, instance method decode from requires T conforms to decodable. Uh, if I do it again over here, just take out the codable conformance there, like that. There's an error. And you might have wondered what decodable was. After all, we've been using Codable everywhere. Well, behind the scenes, Codable is just an alias for two separate protocols. So if I go ahead and examine this thing here, you'll see actually it is internally just decodable and encodable together. It's not its own unique type. You can use Codable if you want to, or you can use encodable and decodable if you prefer being specific. One can be decoded from JSON to objects, one can be encoded to JSON from objects. It's down to you which you prefer.